gifts from death row and he went to a no-kill shelter here in LA okay. and he's just a wonderful wonderful loving beautiful gorgeous creature however he does have some social issues he's a little anxious he gets reactive towards strangers and um, other dogs and uh, he's doing some play biting and uh, this is before I've done any training, so we're just kind of showing you how he came in here. And he's very easily overstimulated. He's not calm at all. Sit. Sit. So he doesn't know what that means. Down. And uh, we put the leash on Gib, and oh, he shakes the leash, and he's fairly uncontrollable. When you put the leash on, He's been doing this obviously a lot because he just got here, so this is something that he's come to us with, another bad habit, and he's barely out of control. So so uh, here's how we're starting. Here we are coming out of the gateway with Gib, Gibbs, uh, sit. So of course he doesn't have any kind of sit stay. He wants to rush out here. He's very easily overstimulated. So we have him on a walk here, and uh, I'm glad I doubled up on another collar because the collar he was sent with is broken, and as soon as we applied pressure to that collar, it broke. So uh, we have this, we doubled up, but um, he's pulling quite a lot. So he definitely needs some, some leash skills, leash training skills. Oh, well Gib is really, Gib's really interested in this dog. Yes, very interesting. To show you how he's doing here with dogs at the fence line. Usually, you know, a dog will have come. He'll have some uh, interest in dogs on another uh, on the street when he's on a leash. He's doing this thing. Remember what I said in another clip? Come. He drops it to get the treat. You have him sit. Focus him back into working for you mode. We're doing this in front of a barking dog at a fence line. So just in case you had any issues with him at fence lines, maybe walking past dogs or something like that, just want to show you that he, after this practicing, and he's actually facing the dog head on. He has no interest and we're not having a problem. Good. Go. See, he sees a dog, he turns away, he gets rewarded. Come. That's what you want, but you always have to be watching for that because the most important part of this is when he does the right thing, you need to reward it because all this stuff on the video, it's all brand new behavior. It took a whole lifetime, his whole life to become who he was, which is why you sent him to us. And all this stuff is new, and so you need to keep doing wherever he goes after this. You need to keep doing all these things and being careful of the details. It's really about the details. Rewarding the behavior that you want to see more of and come, calling him out of any kinds of, of staring or, or bad behaviors, not correcting because he thinks that a correction is fun. No correcting, use the training to get him out of bad behavior and rewarding the good behavior that we want to see grow stronger in him. We have a dog approaching, Gibbs doesn't know from, the, from behind us. And he'll show you what he's, when he sees a dog on a leash. Come. Good. You don't want any staring. Because if he, he did have any kind of issue with a dog on a leash, come. I just want to make sure that you see everything here. Um, staring leads to aggression. And a tight leash and staring really could cause aggression with a dog on the street. Come. Or anybody on the street. But you see how I'm calling Gibbs away. The leash stays loose so he doesn't get all ramped up. Come. Good. And of course, you're not going to just, if you're walking him, you're not going to just like stand here. You're going to call him away from that dog. You're on a walk and the dog is right head on. Come. Good. You're going to, hey, right here, bud. You're going to take the leash. You're going to step into Gib and you're going to go on the other side or something because you don't want them to meet. Okay. But what you have right now gets better and better 
you continue to do this and he has the same experience with multiple dogs as time goes on and every time that this happens you see he cares less and less and less later on it's not a problem if you continue to do it the way we're doing it okay let's go bud come on sit okay we're coming out onto the street taking gibbs for a walk having him sit I always have him sit before we open the gate because it's much harder for a dog to stay in a sit stay when you have him sit and then you open the door because usually they'd pop up so just to make it as hard as it could possibly be which means that it'll be more beneficial to his training have him sit first then open the gateway or the doorway or something like that see how he's waiting this is the toughest boundary for him okay because it leads out into the world and he gets really excited out here so notice how I'm always stepping into him to close gates. You're always gonna go left because your body does all the work. See how your body does all the work that way? And you can tap to slow him down and turn. It's all about, okay, coaxing him to catch up if he lags behind, tapping and turning. Your body does all the work. Any kind of tight leash will cause stress, overstimulation. You're dragging him out around. He's gonna be on your left in training mode because uh, that's just kind of standard. And if you turn right and you drag him around, you cause him to go back to his old ways, which is extreme overstimulation, excitement out of being out of control. So always use your body to take him wherever you want him to go. If I want to go right, right now, and he's just on free time, I'm gonna make sure this leash is loose always because it's just always tapping, never like this. Always tapping, I wanna go that way. Okay, I'm gonna tap and go, go left to go right. And after a while, it's just a pattern, he gets used to it, and that's all he knows. So that's the way we're doing that. Okay. He's doing really well. So if you are having an issue, use a treat, good. As something passes by, and it makes him calmer, and enables him to stay focused and stay in a sit stay. And when you're ready to release him, pat his chest and say, go, come. But don't try this until you're really you know, practiced at the training, like he's used to doing this with me for a month. Um, this is just to show you what he is capable of if uh, he's comfortable with the handler and what he can do and um, Just like everything else start slow work into tougher and tougher situations come Always call him away from anything approaching Because doing that every time you go out in public now is what has enabled him to be able to handle it better come always calling him away from something no staring No tight leashes Okay Okay, so I'm gonna practice with Gibbs sit. There's a lot going on here, but I wanted to show you how he actually can handle a lot more right now than he could before. A lot of people walking past, carts going past, and difficult things to handle. That was really tough. All I did was I tap, tap, tap. You may have seen that. Kept him in a sit stay. But there was a time when he couldn't do this, obviously. Stay in a sit stay with a lot of people walking around and things with wheels like this. Look, buddy, right here. I'm gonna kind of like uh, good circumvent any problem with wheels because it's fine. Yeah, you got plenty of room there. Nope. Down. Notice how I'm using my left foot in a very uh, stressful situation like this where there's a lot going on. He may not respond immediately to your down command. Good. So instead of telling him the command, he ignores you and then you forcing him down. Just, just down all at once. The timing is really important. All he knows is he heard good. All he knows is he heard uh, the command and he went there immediately and that's how you eventually you're you don't have to do this part anymore because you just say down and he goes down because of how you practice with him so it's not down and then force him down it's simultaneous 
down and very quickly you'll have a much better down where you don't have to use your foot. So this down stay, it's just like the mat exercise and we practiced the mat exercise a lot with distractions and then that enabled him to handle it out in public. So he's staying there, rewarding him exactly the same way as on the mat, good. And then he waits to be released, come back next to him. Okay, okay, okay buddy. Sit, remember everything ends with a sit stay. Go, we had him sit and then we say go and he's released. And you see, even when things are passing by, come, I'm gonna call him away from that. Good, if you don't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of giving him some leeway, but if you're taking him out in public, always call him away from distractions because every time you do that, makes him better and better and see how eventually you do that a couple hundred times which you could do in a week easily and he just starts to come to you before you call him to come because that's just the pattern you call him away from every distraction and then he just starts doing it on his own like you see in these videos okay all right we have this issue where he'll see a stranger on the street and you can see this is a come somebody he's never met before and you see how what a, an imposing figure he is come you see how gibbs is at first he wants to run over and bark at that guy or who knows what come so as i'm approaching a stranger that i want him to like come i'm going to use my recall and i'm going to do this i might do this for a whole minute see how he starts to turn away and come back to me every time he turns away come he starts to mellow out a little bit and calm down because come Staring leads to aggression. Staring at a tight leash, the wrong way to do it is like this and let him pull you over. Come, the right way is to call him away. Good, and continue him breaking away also. Come, he's getting a little bit of this uh, dog treat. Come, so it makes me important and him less important. Come, and also food is immediate gratification for dogs as well as people. Come. Good, and we're calming him down. Every time that he comes back to me, come. He's calming down a little bit more. We've been out here doing our recall with him, uh, preparing him to meet this stranger. Come. We've probably been doing at least two minutes worth of just calling him back and moving a little bit closer progressively to this new person. You see how he just keeps turning back to me? Come. And he's way calmer now. So we're gonna have him sit, and we're gonna just have him go over and just accept a gift out of this person's hand. And all you gotta do is just go like that, and he'll take it out of your hand. And just make sure you, nope. Make sure that you just go like this, in front of you like that. Straight in front of you. And then I'll send him over. Go ahead, offer it to him now. No, and you have to make sure that Gibbs waits first before you actually send him over. Go say hi. Look at that. What? Come. Then call him back to you. Good. And this is sit. I picked a person that would be absolutely the hardest for Gibbs to handle. Tall person he's never seen before. And on the street, not in the yard. So this is really. Um, the toughest challenge with a greeting routine that Gibbs could have. Make sure he waits till you say, go say hi. More treats from the new person. Good boy. Good Come. Boy. Good boy. But have your person, like wh whoever you pick, at first, if it's a new person, have them not talk because sit. We don't want um, to trigger Gibbs in any way. Uh, he wasn't triggered, and the person actually said a few things, but. Um, I know his pre previous history, and if we, if all we have is just doing multiple, multiple um, greetings where he approaches a stranger, accepts a gift, and we call him back to come, that's huge for him because obviously we know he was lunging at people and that kind of stuff before. Um, but 
Another thing you can do, and if you're doing this greeting routine with somebody he does know, you can throw in your sit stays as well before you send him back over. We're just gonna send him over one more time. Make sure this leash is always loose because what will make all the training go away is tension on the leash and a tight leash. So really watch what you're doing. If you got a tight leash all the time, he's gonna lose his mind and the training will go away. So loose leash at all times, just like we're doing in the video. Nope, if he gets up, you say no and just tap him like I just did. He'll put himself back with your right hand, pat his chest and say, go say hi one last time. Good boy, come. Good, call him back. That's a big win. Every time we introduce him to a new person and he gets this new perception of like, wow, new people are really cool and they have gifts for me. Gradually, we're undoing that, that behavior he was doing before where he was um, nervous about new people or aggressive with new people. So this is all about creating a new perception of the situation. And uh, as you can see, we start out with him barking at the guy. Now he wants to go and get more treats from the guy. He's like, oh, this guy's pretty cool. And you notice the difference between Gibbs now and when we started this a few minutes ago. And uh, every time that we do that with a stranger, it's a little bit better because practice makes perfect. So just make sure when you're introducing new people, you do it exactly like this. Okay. sit. You always are going to lead Gibbs up to the mat, have him sit, and he loves to do this, so make sure that he really waits until you actually release him. Notice how the leash is loose? Nope. And if he jumps the gun like that, just do this little reset circle, which helps a lot. Put him back. You don't have to say sit again, just say no. Reset him. You already said sit once. We're really trying not to repeat commands at all. So he's waiting, the leash is loose. If he gets up or jumps the gun, just tap back and release like that. If you hold him there, restrained, it'll cause more overexcitement. He'll pull against it and you'll have no training at all. So keep it loose, always do taps, never continuous tension in any situation. So he's waiting here, he's on my left with my right hand, I'm gonna pat his chest and say, go to your mat. Walk him over and say down. We're just gonna practice this little exercise for a few minutes. Notice how I'm rewarding him. Good. Placing it on the mat, he waits until I withdraw to take it off the mat. As excited as he is, he knows the rules to this game. In his mind, it's a game. <clears throat> and the whole idea with all of these different things that we're doing is that he has no idea that we're training. This is just a game he plays with us that he loves to play because he gets paid. There are rules here, good, calm, respectful, waiting until I withdraw to take it off the mat. If he's touching your hand or trying to grab it from you, that's not good. That, you, you can't allow that because that means he doesn't respect you and that means he's not thinking. He could be in a downstay, but his mind could still be in turmoil. So always make sure that you pay attention to the details like that. Like, is he really waiting? And you can even pause for longer periods down there. Notice how I take the reward out of my pouch. I'm not going like this or anything like that because that will lure him to jump up and try to get it. So I take it out of my, pa my pouch and I swing in like this. Good, see how I paused a good three seconds there? And I'm gonna pause a little bit longer each time now, every day that I do this, I do it for about five minutes or so. I set my timer and I do it for about five minutes. And so in five minutes, he really calms down. He really starts to be calm. You can see the difference between when we started and since we've been here. And this whole exercise is about making him good, making him think, focus, be in the moment here get it together, calm down. We're really after the byproduct of how we do this exercise, um, which is to be calm 24 seven. It's an exercise of the mind for him. And obviously his crazy mind, he's got tons of energy 
tons of prey drive. This crazy mind is what causes all the issues. So we're trying to do ev everything that we do with him. We're trying to hit him where it starts, and that's with his, his brain, teaching him self-control. This is self-control here. Good. Waiting respectfully until you withdraw. Notice I say good when he takes it because we want him to love that word good. And when we don't use a treat, which as time goes on, you phase the treats out, um, he still gets a great feeling about that word. So that's why timing's really important. You say good at the moment he takes the treat or the moment you give it to him, not before, not after. Timing's everything with this. So we, so I focus mostly on just doing a basic sit st or down stay here. He stays there where I walk around both ways. Whatever he does on the mat, he'll do without the mat now because that's the way it works. You practice, you teach him the stuff on the mat, then you start practicing it uh, out in public, not on the mat, and he, he can do it so well there because we started teaching him here. The mat is the fast track to a solid down stay. Good. But obviously there's a ton of things you can do. We're in a fenced yard right now, so we can... This is a good thing to practice, pull on the leash, because every dog that comes here, they... Good. They always will get up and come to me when I pull on the leash in the beginning. But when I say down, he knows that that means to stay until he's released. He only leaves one way, and that's when I release him in a very specific way. So since we're in a fenced yard, I can walk farther away. I'm gonna to try to get him to make a mistake. And he made a mistake, so you say no. And walking towards the exit entrance to this yard is the hardest thing for any of these dogs to handle because when they're loose out here, see how I just said no and put him back? I didn't say D-O-W-N again, I already said down once. We want that first, that first time you told him to hold for the whole five minutes if need be. But when we're out here and we walk back and forth, we come in and out of there, when they're loose out here, which they are most of the time, they're used to running up to us or following us to the gate. So that's why it's a great thing to practice. When I say down, he's in work mode and I don't care if I'm going there or coming in, he needs to stay there because I didn't release him. So if this is difficult, and you're going to have all kinds of things that you practice with him. Hopefully you continue to do this because you just will get better and better. Um, you'll, you'll get him over um, a little problem he has. He won't, he won't have a problem with that anymore. And then you'll find something else you can work on. So it's always good to, to push the envelope and always have something you're working on with him. And this is how you'll do it. So obviously this is difficult for him. So before I go do this now, I'm going to remind him what to keep doing. Down. I'm going to tell him down. That's the only time you would repeat that command, just to remind him what to keep doing. So he's already staying there. I'm opening the gate. And I'm going to start here, closing the gate, and being on the other side, and then coming back. And rewarding. He stayed there, so you give him a reward. Good. Always the same way. Calmly, he waits till you withdraw. And that will make it a little bit harder. So I did it. He made a mistake. I said no. I reset him the second time. He stayed there. Now this will be the third time. I'm going to remind him down. I'm going to go out the gate and then open this big gate. That's a tough one. And disappear. So that was tough for him. So I'm going to say no. And he's going to put himself back. Down. The problem happened when I disappeared out of view. So I disappear out of view. I come back. And this time he's there. You see, he knows how this game works. I'm just throwing a new challenge at him but we've done so many challenges with him. No, see how he tried to, to take the treat before I withdrew? Good. Make sure you always watch that. If he tries to, to touch your hand before you withdraw, pull it back and say no. So one last time, down. You see the way this works? You just chip away at a problem. You do step by step by step. 
because then you'll be able to identify what part of whatever you're doing triggers him to, to lose his focus. Down, this will be the tough thing, closing the gate behind me. Coming back, that was pretty good. If you just throw a challenge like this at him every day, and then work through it and get a success and then finish. This is a double reward. Nope. No. Be really clear about this. Good. That was a double amount because he had a success. If he has a success with something that he previously made a mistake at, give him a big payoff at the end because he'll remember what he did to earn that and this pattern's already been set because we've done this with a bunch of different things. I mean, at first, the, the challenge was just to stay there while I walked behind him, you know, and, and when he had the, he had the successes finally, he got big rewards and he remembered that and he never got that and then I moved on to more and more difficult things. So that's the way it works and this is the whole process for whatever challenge you want to throw at him. Once again, the byproduct of being able to handle things like that is, to, is that you release him and every day you do this, he's just a little bit calmer and a little bit more in control as time goes on. Okay, sit. So you saw I said, okay, I released him. I walked him off the mat, I have him sit. And then I'm gonna release him to be free. Go, always pick this mat up. It's not a doggy bed. It's not a place to hang out on. What, no matter what you use for this mat, and of course his big problem, if it's a problem, is to grab the leash. So, come. That happens. I'm not gonna fight with him, struggle. Somebody's been playing tug of war with him a lot, I can tell, and it's something that a lot of people do. But it's caused this problem where he grabs the leash. So instead of playing his game, which is to take it away from him or grab it from him, which is what he loves, and that would make the problem worse, I call him to come, he has to drop the leash to get the reward, and then, okay, reset him into doing something for me mode, sit training mode. And he forgets about what he was doing because I brought his mind into focus and working for me mode. That's the way to handle any problem. If you wait for him to do something and you correct and you struggle with him, with this dog, it's game on and it just gets worse and worse and worse because very few people can out muscle him and uh, force him to do anything. So we have to be smarter than that and use the training to get him past these little issues. But this mat doesn't have to be a mat like this. It could be a bath mat or something like that. Not a doggy bed, but just a comfortable flat mat. It's very sacred. It's only for this exercise. You put it down and then you bring him to it and you allow him on, do your thing, allow him off, and then you pick it up right away or you put him somewhere because it's, it's, he only goes on with your permission, only comes off with your permission. It's only for this one thing. Dog bed is a free time place. He comes and goes as he pleases and uh, it's, it's different, so that's the way you do the mat exercise. Okay.